Hello again and welcome to this lesson where we are having a look at the basic sine graph okay, or the basic form for the sine graph. Let's just remind ourselves a few things about the sine function. So if I have a function, okay, I substitute x into sine, okay, so x becomes the input for the sine function. Uh, what, what can we conclude from that? Well, first of all, we should remember that sine of an angle, so let me choose another angle, angle theta, is the opposite length of the right angle triangle divided by the hypotenuse. So one very uh, simple way of understanding all this is to consider a ladder against a wall. So there's my ladder. Okay. It's standing against a wall. Wall. And uh, what the sine function would do is the height that the ladder reaches on the wall, this height, that would be the opposite side length if this is our angle theta. And that's our opposite. And the ladder's length would be our hypotenuse. So this will be our hypotenuse. So that sine of theta will equal the opposite over the hypotenuse. So it's a ratio comparing the height that we can reach with the ladder over the length of the ladder. Now, the one thing that I hope you are noticing is that the height that we can reach with the ladder okay, can never be more than the ladder itself. Okay, If this is the scenario that I'm looking at, the height that I can reach with the ladder is never higher than the height of the ladder itself. In other words, the opposite side length will always be smaller than the hypotenuse, but it may be equal to as well. Okay, so for example, if the ladder is just standing straight up against that wall, so in other words, the angle that I'm making with the ladder and the horizontal is a 90 degree angle. Okay then I'm standing straight up against the wall and that's the maximum height I can reach so the maximum value that I can reach on the wall the opposite is going to be H in other words the to find the maximum value of this it would be opposite over hypotenuse if it's 90 degrees it would be hypotenuse over hypotenuse because then the opposite length is the same length as the hypotenuse or the height on the wall is the same as the um, height of the ladder okay and that would just equal one so the biggest value that sine of theta can have the biggest value that sine can ever obtain is one sine will always be less than one now here we are working with length so we don't have negative values but as soon as I'm working on my Cartesian plane okay so let me draw my Cartesian plane and as soon as, uh, remember on the Cartesian plane, sine of theta is equal to y over r, where r is kind of now the length of the ladder, and y is the height I reach on the wall. Okay, why is that so? Well, because this, I, the height I can reach on the wall, I read off of my y-axis, and the ladder's length is called r because it's the radius of a circle. Okay, so is r is the radius from the center to um, that coordinate which would be the coordinate x comma y okay now my point that i'm trying to make is as soon as i get into the third and fourth quadrants the y value will start being negative because now i'm reading off from the negative um, leg of the y-axis so now it would be a negative value. So sine can go into the negatives, but still the idea remains the same. Even on the negative side, this length, the, in other words, the positive length of, uh, of the opposite will never be longer than the hypotenuse. Okay, so um, from that I can also conclude that yes, I can have things like negative a half, but I can't have things like 
oh, let me write it first. I can't have something like 2 over 1. Okay, the opposite over the hypotenuse can never have that ratio because the opposite can't be longer than the hypotenuse. Um, and neither can it be negative 2 over 1. Okay, so I can't have numbers that's smaller than negative 1, but I can have numbers bigger than negative 1. Can I have sine theta equal to 0? Is it possible that there's an angle where the opposite over the hypotenuse will give me an answer of 0? Well, of course. Okay, where must I put the ladder so that I don't have any height? on the wall, not reaching any heights on the wall. Well, if the ladder is just lying flat on the ground, if the ladder is just horizontally flat on the ground, and there's my wall, okay, you see I'm not reaching any heights on the wall. The hypotenuse is the ladder still has its length, okay, whatever that is, but the height, the opposite side length is zero. So I get zero over whatever the hypotenuse is, it doesn't matter, would equal zero. Now, what is the angle that I'm looking at? Well, this time my angle is zero degrees. Okay, so what we have so far is that when my angle theta is equal to, I'm making a little table of values, when my angle theta is zero, I found that sine of theta was also equal to zero. And I'm working with degrees here, so I'm going to add the degree sign. Okay. And then I also saw that when it was 90 degrees, that's when sine reaches its maximum value. When it was 90 degrees, I got a value of 1. Okay, Because the opposite and hypotenuse is the same value, so it cancels out to give me a 1. Now, from special angles that we've done already, we also know that sine of 30 degrees is equal to a half. Okay, so if I have a 2 meter long ladder and it's at 30 degrees on the horizontal, I will reach 1 meter on the wall. Okay, I hope you can interpret it like that. Then I also saw that 45 degrees gives me a value of square root 2 over 2. Okay. What is that value? Well, let's go see. Let's go get our calculator. Okay, square root 2. Well, let's just take sine of uh, 45. 45 sine gives me 0 0.707. Okay, so that's, let's go about 0 0.7. Okay, 1, if we round it off. And at 60 degrees, we saw that we got... Uh, 60 was square root 3 over 2. I'm squeezing a bit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, let's see what sine of 60 degrees square root 3 over 2. So let's try this one as 3 square root over 2 is equal to 0 0.866. Okay, so rounding it off is about 0 0.866867. Okay, and uh, well, let's just use this information so long, this little table to go and plot a little bit of what we have so far. That's a terribly skew line. Okay. So far, there's my y axis and my x axis. But now I'm just my dependent var independent variable, I'm going to make theta. It can be x. I just don't want to confuse you now with the uh, X and Y that we've been using up here. Okay, so please, please take note. It's not the same X and Y. Okay, this is if I'm drawing the graph of the function FX is equal to sine of theta. While this Cartesian plane was used to draw a triangle from which I can calculate sine of theta. So here I'm just using that theta so that you realize that on my x-axis now is not um, anything other than the angle that I'm putting in here. Okay, so I'm starting with zero degrees. Okay, and we saw that for sine, when I had zero degrees, this coordinate is zero degrees gives me a zero output. So I'm cutting through at the origin. 
okay next is at 30 degrees so let me just make one uh, make a one here and a negative one there because I know my graph is never going to go further than that so then at 30 degrees I notice I was at a half so there I was more or less there I am for 30 degrees for 45 degrees I was at about 0.7 so what is this one two three four five so 0.7 is more or less there that's at 45 degrees so if this is 30 60 90 then 45 would be here in between okay up to 0.7 there we go okay and then at 60 degrees 60 degrees I see I'm at 0 0.866 so at 60 degrees I'm at 0 0.866 that is almost 0 0.9 okay so that's about there okay that's a bit too high about there in the half halfway and then at 90 degrees I'm actually at this highest point here okay at 90 degrees I reach my maximum so so far this is what this would look like a smooth curve through those points through there there we go okay that's not too bad okay so what happens when these values take negative values okay so zero can't take a negative but let's say we have now negative 30 degrees so sine of negative 30 degrees hopefully you remember that in my cast diagram which is this one negative angles acute negative angles is in the fourth quadrant and sine is negative in this quadrant okay so negative or sine of negative 30 can be written as negative sine of 30 okay in other words if sine of 30 is a half sine of negative 30 is negative a half if sine of 45 is um, 0 comma 71 sine of negative 45 will be negative 0 comma 71 if sine of 60 is 0 comma 86 sine of negative 60 will be negative 0 comma 86 and if sine of 90 is 1 sine of negative 90 is negative 1 okay so let's go plot that on here so there we go again there's our 30 60 90 45 here in the middle and now we're going on the on the x-axis so let's uh, one two three four five there we go at 30 degrees I see at 30 degrees I should be at negative a half or at negative 30 so at negative 30 degrees let's number this 30 45 60 90 at negative 30 I should be at negative a half okay so there's another point at 45 which a bit more there at 45 I should be about negative 7.1 which is just above 7.1 there we go negative 7.1 at negative 60 I should be at 0 0.86 almost at 0.9 so halfway between there okay that's at 60 degrees if I go down okay I should be there and at 90 degrees I've reached my minimum value the lowest that sign can ever take would be right there okay and now if I connect these ones once again I get a shape like that okay now what is it going to look like further onwards well now let's just go into this uh, um, in these intervals again of 30 degrees each time so 30 150 180 negative 120 sorry this is 90 this is 120 150 180 degrees okay this one is 120 negative 120 negative 150 and I'm going to have to draw it a little bit further to get to negative 180 okay so you can see I skipped the middle step here I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that one okay so 
let's do 120 degrees sine of 120 degrees you'll remember is a hundred sine of 180 change colors a bit okay is sine of 100 sine of 180 degrees minus 60 degrees so that 180 minus the second quadrant sine is still positive there so sine of 60 this just changes into sine of 60 and sine of 60 is uh, 0 0.866 so it's about 0 0.866 Okay, so let's go plot that one. So 120 would be back up at this point. See, that point is repeated again after another 30. Okay, so we're going down. You notice that? Okay, how about sine of 120, 150? Sine of 150 is equal to sine of 180 degrees minus 30 degrees. Okay, that gives me 150. 180 minus is second quadrant, still positive. So this is the same of sine of 30 degrees, which we know is a half. Okay, so I am now repeating this point once I get here. Okay, you might again ask me, well, what about this intermediate point? Well, that's at 135. That point will be repeated there. I'm not going to do it for time's sake, but that point will be repeated there. Okay, and then finally, sine of 180 degrees. Okay, what about sine of 180 degrees? Well, 180 degrees is sine of 180 minus zero, isn't it? Okay. I get 180 inside there so this is positive still so uh, in second quadrant well it's actually on the border of second quadrant and third quadrant but let's assume this is second quadrant the sign is still positive so this is sine of zero which is just zero if you said it was in the third quadrant that's fine and you, you could have said 180 plus zero third quadrant so it takes a negative but negative zero is still just zero Point being that the last coordinate is back here on the x -ax, um, axis. So there my graph goes back down here. And again on the negative side, everything just takes a negative. So sine of negative 120 is negative 0, 0,866. Sine of negative 150 is negative a half. Sine of negative 180 is still just zero. So on this side, it will also just repeat everything again so that this point is repeated when I'm at negative 120 okay that point is reached again when I'm at negative 150 okay sorry I'm lying that point is at negative 135 okay there okay Okay, and this point here, once I'm at 150, sine of negative 150 is negative a half. Okay, so there I'm at, that's actually a half. Okay, and there. And then sine of negative 180 is again just negative sine of zero, which is zero. So I am back here. Now, obviously, this hand drawn sketch makes it look very ugly i mean okay the actual shape looks much more like that okay much smoother than mine came out obviously it's because i'm not drawing with uh, v very accurate measurements okay but you can see more or less the idea that is the basic shape and once i get to 180 degrees okay so let's go through the quadrants here's my my quadrants okay I've now started at zero degrees I went all the way up to 90 degrees and then I went to 180 degrees now I enter the third quadrant which means from here on onwards sign is negative so look what happens on the graph from here on we are repeating this cycle going down and up again okay so here you can see here's the first quadrant Q1 here's 
the second quadrant, Q2. And now we'll enter the third and the fourth quadrant that will go all the way down here and back up. Okay, so. And here would be the maximum that I reach again at negative 270. And at 360 in, I would have done a full cycle. So I'll start back at the start again. In other words, back there again. So this is 360. And I just repeat this whole cycle again. And in between here, I'll again repeat these same points over and over again. Okay, so this means that this is my third quadrant is from 180 to sorry that shouldn't be negative from 180 to 270 and this is my fourth quadrant from 270 to 360 so in these two quadrants you can see the sign is negative okay while in the first two it's positive if I go backwards okay remember now I'm traveling in this direction I first encounter Q4 Okay, my fourth quadrant, which is negative. Then I go into my third quadrant. Okay, so this is the third quadrant. Sign is still negative in the third quadrant. And if I were to continue, and I don't have space here, but if I were to continue at this point, I'll reach my maximum negative 270. Okay, that's when I'll reach my maximum of, of one. Okay there would be a negative 270 and this would be Q3 goes up to there I'm going in the negative direction so the next one is Q2 so this would be Q2 and you can see now I'm above the um, x-axis or the, the theta axis in this case so I'm positive I've got positive outputs okay and Again, I'm in Q1 is in between negative 270 and negative 360. Okay, so let's just quickly summarize all of this. I know I've said a lot and uh, I hope I haven't confused you at all. But let's just summarize all of that in a very brief or a small sketch so that's more or less what the graph looks like okay where to complete this whole up and down cycle this whole wave starting from here to there is 360 degrees remember that is called the period the period is how long is one cycle so let's say I'm talking about X and Y where X just represents the angle that I'm putting into my sine graph then this is the function if X is equal to sine of X we noticed that the maximum height that I reach and I read that maximum height at 90 degrees is 1 the minimum value I ever reach and I can reach that minimum value at either negative 90 degrees or at 270 degrees. 270 degrees is the minimum value I reach and that is negative 1. So the range for this function, the range is that the output f of x will always be an element between negative 1 and positive 1 included we can reach 1 and we can reach negative 1 we just can't go beyond them okay and then the last point I want to make is that once I reach 180 degrees I'm back at I've gone up and down I'm back at the x-axis and then I head downward so here you can see um, for this part I've got a positive slope because I'm increasing and from here on onwards I've got a negative slope I'm decreasing decreasing until I get here and then I increase again okay so this is the basic shape and I think just one thing I want to mention is the difference the only difference between sine and cos cos is moved up a little bit I'll show you that one in the next video but um, one one way in which you can remember is sine passes through 
the origin sign passes through the origin the origin obviously being uh, the point zero comma zero okay and I'm sure this was a long video but uh, necessary for you in order to understand the shape of the sign graph uh, and just remember this thing goes on and on forever and ever it doesn't have to stop because our angle can actually be any size so that the domain okay so that the domain is x can be any real number cool see you in the next video